Jakota Naga. Brenda Gozo Kule Nemehe. Jajo Kotonike Li Namaha. Angra Nonzo Kula Namaha. De Drene Gegele Nemosa. Say of the Spirit of God, there has never been a scarcity of my power. All the power that you will ever need, I made available to you at the point of your birth. You were born with all of my power. You were not born deficient. You were born complete. Everything that constitutes me was packaged together to give birth to you, saith God. But you will have to place a demand on the resources that are available to you by regeneration. And you place that demand intentionally so you make that power available in the natural. So you see, saith God, when you do not give yourself intentionally to take off and take from my power, then you live the life of defeat. You live a life that is full of apologies. You live a life that attracts sympathy and sorrow. Then you live under undue pressures. Saith God, I never designed for you to live a life of pressure. I designed for you to live a life of rest. But you cannot function in rest from the natural. You only function in rest from the spiritual. From the spiritual. From the spiritual. That's why in my word I said to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded when your mind is full of the spiritual possibilities that are available to you. You function from a place of rest and no devil in hell has what it takes to discomfort your position. Because you exercise superiority over devils. You function in your full capacity, saith God. You function in your full abilities. And all of those abilities are abilities that the devil and his cohorts cannot withstand. Because the light and darkness, saith God, has never had a competition. Oh yeah, I said in my word that the light shines in darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend the light. The light dominates darkness. Darkness and the light never fight. The exit of light is the dominance of darkness. And the entrance of light is the absence of darkness. So you yield to my spirit and you yield to my word and you take off and take from the resources that I have made available to you in the spirit and use them to live a life of victory and a life of total dominion on the earth, saith God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Jakota Naga. Brenda Gozo Kule Nemehe. Jajo Kotoni Keli Namaha. Angra Nonzo Kula Namaha. De Drene Gegele Nemosa. Say of the Spirit of God, there has never been a scarcity of my power. All the power that you will ever need, I made available to you at the point of your birth. You were born with all of my power. You were not born deficient. You were born complete. Everything that constitutes me was packaged together to give birth to you, saith God.
Karegata Shoto Leka Pala Yata Haska Zute Kelebraninga Tato Shuta Yatanda Yata. I want you to thank God for the strength which we have enjoyed. Ege Gabo Shoto Yata. Lige Belenge Bojuta Lege Praniga Dodo Shote Lege Prayato Hoske Yande Gene Bojatala Yata. Briganda do shote ke le prana ga do shoto le ke ba do robo shoto le ke pre anda do shoto le ke ba ya toska le prano she le prano she te le prana ka to shote le prane ga to do she ta manda ke le ke mo do shata ke la ba ya ta ha le ke 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 bo shoto ke ke le prane ga do do bo shata ka ya ta ha le prane ga do shoto le ka ya ta I want to thank God tonight for our teacher even our papa who le ke ke mo no shata ya ta Let's thank God for his you know for his life for the ministry. Let's thank God for what God is using him to do in our lives and in the life of people all over the world. Let's thank God for the abundance of grace and abundance of revelation gifted him. Toleke pein kadayata no shatayata brigando shoto keke le manayata. Let's thank God tonight that is strengthened with might by the Spirit of God in His inner mind. Legege bo shoto keke meleka tolo bo shatale kapanda yata hayata. Ilangege mondo shoto le kapala yata. Legege ponda shatale kadaiwa yata ha. Brigando shoto kopo shoto yata ha. Eke bono shoto yata ha. Egege golo bo shoto yata. Egege bo shoto that as he's teaching every day is refreshed on a daily is refreshed daily as his day so shall his strength be Let's thank God. God has gifted him good utterance, utterance, utterance. Eke ya pado shata yata, meke ke 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 boto shata yata, lika tapo no shoto yata, lika prani gata ba yata. Let's thank God for boldness. Lika apo no shoto yata ha. He enjoys abundance of utterance. Eke ke pondo shoto yata and boldness. Lika belondo po shoto leke prayata to preach the word and to teach the word on a daily. Meke ke boto shoto ke pala yata ya. Le praya kata yata. Lika pando shoto leka pala yata haska yata. Let's thank God for words that God had put into his mouth, the right word, the right expression to teach the word. How possible are right words? For words that are fitly spoken, they are as apples of gold in pictures of silver. Make a cap or to shot ayata. He speaks the word. Make a cap or shot ayata. Hala leke praninga tabo shot ayata. Eke ke bondo shot ayata. Eke pando shot ayata. Ha. Eke ke bondo shot ayata. Eke ke mana shot ayata. Make a cap or shot ayata. Eke ke bondo 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 shot ayata. Thank you, Father, for the demonstration of the Spirit and of the power of God. Make a God of Ayata. Ege ge ge bo 
Thank you, Father, because where the word of a king is, there is power. Power to heal, power to set the captives free, power to save, power to deliver. Lift your hands and give him praise. Thank you, Father. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let's celebrate our papa and our mama in the house with a clap, with a shout, with a shout, with a shout, a shout of joy. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's lift our hands above our heads and put those hands together with a joyful shout. Let's receive our papa, Dr. Abel Damina. Glory. Somebody shout a powerful amen. amen. Father, we rejoice that we are found in you and complete in you. And we rejoice that the revelation of your word is alive in our hearts. So I decree that as your word comes with clarity tonight, your people are built up, equipped, edified, and Jesus is glorified. We decree that whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. Bodies and yokes are destroyed. And we rejoice that by the end of this service, we'll all be the better for it. So we give you praise, glory, and honor for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer sees a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together. As we say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the world. I do the world naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. We well, want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of our social media community. We're so glad to welcome all of you to the service this evening. We also want to welcome the Aquaibom State community connected to this service right now by way of Comfort FM, XL FM Radio, Aquaibom, Passion FM, Inspiration FM, and Heritage FM. We're so glad to welcome all of you to the service, guys. It's going to be an exciting study of God's Word. You want to call a friend, a family member, ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. We also want to ask the social media community like you've always done. Let's get this word to the ends of the earth. Help us share the video as many times as possible on different pages. Join as many groups as possible. Let's get the word to the ends of the earth. All our campuses around the world, brothers and sisters, in the various campuses, we're so glad to welcome all of you to the service. Guys, get ready. We're going to fellowship in the light of God's word. Are we excited to be in church tonight? Can we go ahead and celebrate the world, celebrate our fellowship? Glory! Amen. Well, grab your, your notebook, your pen, your Bible, and your phones, and you can be seated with your sweet, smart self tonight. This, this, this monitor is not on. Where's the gentleman? Come and put it on now, since you didn't do it before. Now, quickly, I need this monitor on. Quickly, quickly. I need my monitor on here on the stage. Praise God. All right, grab your phones, put, put, you know, share the videos to as many groups as possible. Get them everywhere you need to get the, you know, the messages to. Let's flood the earth with the truth of God's word. Can somebody shout a powerful amen? <clears throat> we're still examining the in Christ realities and we've been, you know, on this. And we're going to be on this for quite a bit because there's a lot to get out of what we've been sharing in the last one week or so. The in Christ reality is dealing with Brother Paul's revelation of identification. And we are looking at the insight that Brother Paul had on the Old Testament. Second Peter chapter 3 verse number 15. Second Peter 3.15. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved Brother Paul also 
according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. So he talks about the fact that it was wisdom. And the word wisdom is the word Sophia. In the Greek, it implies insight. Insight. That is, this insight was given to Brother Paul, coming from an apostle of, of you know, Peter's cloud, making such strong statements on the insight of Brother Paul. That's very heavy description of the Pauline letters by an apostle of no mean repute by the name of Peter. Like I told you, it always deals with Paul's skillfulness of going around the Old Testament. That is the skillfulness by which he uses the word to explain terms. Because of that insight, we must handle his letters with precision, with patience, and with a lot of calmness, precision, patience, and a lot of calmness. Because remember, what he is dealing with in, is salvation. The subject matter that Brother Paul wrote to Timothy about. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, he says to Timothy, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. The word wise there again is the word Sophia. What he's saying is, Timothy, you have followed me so well that you have the same insight that I have in the Old Testament. You have the same insight, the same skillfulness. And that's the word soteria in the subject of salvation. Basically, that means that Brother Paul's insight about what is about what why Jesus came, what Jesus did, and that was very peculiar to the Pauline letters. Let's observe a few commentaries here. Second Peter chapter three verse number sixteen. Second Peter chapter three verse sixteen, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. The word epistle there, because brother, brother Peter uses a term there, epistle, which he also mentioned in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 1. He mentioned the same word, epistle. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. That word epistle is the word epistole in the Greek. Epistole, E-P-I-S-T-O-L-E. -E. It's used for a message consistently. That is the mode of communication. Whatever church Peter is talking about here must have received the epistle of Paul, which shows that the epistle of Paul at this time was, you know, it was enough, authoritative enough to be received and read in many assemblies. So you find the term used firstly as a mode of communication of writing or communication of message to the church or the churches. In Acts 15.30 again. Acts 15.30 you can read at home. It has to do with Paul. Because that was the issue of the Gentile churches. And now some people had gone there to say. That for you to be saved you have to be circumcised. Or some people said even if you are saved you have to still be circumcised. So when the debate went on. And it was re resolved, an epistle was written to them in Acts 15.30. Then you have other places the word epistle was used. Of course, for further studies, Acts 22 verse 5, Acts chapter 22 verse 5, Acts chapter 23 verse 25, Acts chapter 23 verse 33. So it's a prominent mode of communication. It's used 17 times, the word epistle. So Brother Peter recognizes that in the Pauline writings. Notice what Peter said. 
has written unto you. So they don't just, they didn't just pick materials on the road. Specific men with specific authority wrote them, hath written unto you, to write to you. It will mean that there's a level of authority and accountability that must be in place. Authority and accountability that must be in place. The epistles carry a more authoritative weight than the books we publish today. They carry a more authoritative weight than the books we publish today because the books we publish today are, are only as authoritative to the extent to which it draws its authority from the authoritative scriptures. The books we write today. I remember when I started publishing books and writing books, the first set of books I wrote, I got a guy who, who was to look at them for me and edit them and just run through them and send them back to me. When I sent him the books, he went and removed all the scriptures. He removed all the scriptures. He said to me that the scriptures are too many. That am I writing another Bible? That they don't write books like that. He removed all the scriptures. And then looked for English language to connect scriptural terms. The book came out back to me nonsense, useless, empty, as useless as a shell. So I called him, I said, what nonsense is this? I said, you should just look through it. Are you removing everything that makes the book book? He said, no, you're not writing another Bible. Now that's the problem many people have. Bible teaching is Bible. I'm not writing a, a, I'm not writing a poetic book. I'm not writing a literature material. I am explaining Bible. So if it is Bible, all the usage of words, meaning of words, interpretation of words, all of them derive their authority from the Bible. Because the Bible is self-explanatory. You don't add to it. It does not borrow from you. It has its mind and it knows what it is saying and it means what it is saying and it is consistent in what it is communicating. So it's not like I'm writing another Bible. That is the way Bible materials, doctrinal materials are written. You, you, you allow the Bible interpret itself in your explanation of the doctrinal subject. You allow the Bible interpret itself just the way I teach you. You find out that in the course of teaching, sometimes I give you 100 scriptures in one service. 150 because it's Bible. We are, we are using the Bible to explain the Bible. That is how doctrinal subjects are approached. Am I communicating at all? That's very important. So, Brother Peter said specific men with specific authority wrote to this church. The epistles, like I said, carry a more authoritative weight than the books we write today because they were of doctrinal authority. Then the next verse gave us a little bit of why Paul's letters should be read with precision. That's 2 Peter chapter 3 verse number 16. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse number 16. As also in all his epistles. Speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable. Unlearned and unstable, which is an adjective that describes an attitude, bad character, bad character, unlearned and unstable. Then he says, they do rest as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Notice that Paul's letters were explanation of the Old Testament books. They are not Paul's ideas. They are not Paul's creativity. Neither are they Paul's innovation. So when he mentions... When Peter mentions that Paul has a Sophia, what he is saying is that he has an insight into the Old Testament writings. Now, before you go there, 
Look at a typical example in Acts 17, 11. Acts chapter 17, verse number 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily whether those things were so. These were more noble. And people who do not understand will now say there are what they call noble Christians. But that is illiteracy of scripture. Because people assume that what he was saying was that they were more noble spiritually. But that's not what he was talking about. The word noble is the word hugenes in the Greek. H-U-G-E-N-E-S. Which has to do with those who were born well. Or those who were born in a favorable position. You will see that in Luke chapter 19 verse 2. And in 1 Corinthians 1 26. Not many noble after the flesh. Not many noble after the flesh. So what is describing here is a natural qualification. Then they said those that were noble or were privileged in society received the word with readiness of mind and search the scriptures. The word anakrino in the Greek. Anakrino. Which is to investigate or to make inquiries. They search the scriptures whether those things were so. Again, the word scriptures is the Greek word graphe. When you say scriptures, you are referring to those traditional Jewish writings. The Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms. Graphe. Alright, traditional Jewish writings. The Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then it says, they search whether those things Paul was saying to them were so. So for them to search means they took what Paul said and matched it with the authority, which is the Torah, which is the Old Testament writings. They did anacrino to Paul's teachings. They searched to see whether it was so. So Paul's writings, therefore, will be the doctrine or the written form of his preaching. Paul's writings will be the written form of his preaching or the doctrine. There are two words. The word keruso in the Greek, K-E-R-R-U-S-S-O, -S for preaching. Then graphe, graphe, which is writing. All right, just to help you with the spelling, graphe is spelled as G R A. P-H-E, graphe, all right, graphe, which means writing. Caruso oftentimes will be the oral vocal delivery, the oral vocal delivery. The same pattern after he has spoken is called kerygma, kerygma, which is a short form of saying what is preached or the preaching. Then after that he said, if I write again, what I am doing is, I am writing what I have spoken. So it is first of all spoken, then it is written to be spoken. Which is what we are doing right now. We are speaking from what was written, from what was originally spoken. What the prophet said, documented, then spoken then documented. Are you following? Alright, so that's exactly what we're doing. So, Brother Peter now says in 2 Peter 3.16 he says, the, the unlearned, the unlearned and unstable rest as they do the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Please stay with me. Unto their own destruction. That word rest is the word striblu in the Greek. Striblu. S-T-R-E-B-L-O-O. -O. It means to turn. It also means to torture. It's from the word strefo. S-T-R-E-P-H-O. Strefo. Which is to convert. To convert. In other words, he is saying, 
honest interpretation and study will give you a definite message of the Pauline epistles. Honest interpretation and study will give you a definite message of the Pauline epistles. And therefore, we must avoid the tendencies of converting them to something else. To something else. I have often said that the scriptures can never mean today what it never meant when it was first written. It can never mean today what it never meant when it was first written. That is, you don't say what was not said for the sake of today's relevance. You don't say what was not said for the sake of today's relevance. I bet you, if the people who wrote the scriptures, or if the people, the prophets of the Old Testament, or the apostles of Christ, will sit down today in most churches, they will weep while the preacher is preaching. Because what they will be hearing is not, ex is not at all what they wrote or what they communicated. And the vehemence and the intensity and the energy with which today's preachers are communicating falsehood is very alarming. I have told you, as long as scriptures are not rightly divided, whatever the man is saying is a lie. Have I said that? I want to repeat it again. It doesn't matter who. It doesn't matter who it is. All of us are subject to the authority of scriptures. None of us are the scriptures subject to. So anybody, I don't care who you are, who does not rightly divide scriptures will arrive at a lie. And he will communicate and feed his audience lies. The truth of scripture can only be found when it is rightly divided. That's why Paul will tell Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly, so a preacher that does not want embarrassment and shame must calm down and rightly divide scripture because if not, one of these days there are some bad boys they will take his message on video and match it with our message on video and they will allow you to check the Bible for yourself. You know what I mean? There are some bad boys, man. <laughs> some bad boys. In fact, because of some of these bad boys, many preachers have run away from Facebook. They have run away from Facebook. They don't stream their messages on Facebook. Some of them, the moment they finish, they take the video down. Because they know that these boys will listen and cut where they committed blunder in interpreting scripture and take where it is well interpreted and match the two together and form it as a video. But a, a workman that will never be ashamed, anyhow you turn and twist it, is a man that rightly divides the word of truth. So, in Bible teaching, context is king. Context is king. Because the Bible is a contextual material. So that's exactly what Peter was saying about Paul. He said that what he said was insight into the Holy Scriptures. However, some folks have twisted it around for something else. In other words, Paul's epistles must be left the way it is. The subject matters must be left the way it is. The only thing that should ever change is the geographical location and specific persons. What I mean by that is when he says, I write this to Epaphras. You are not Epaphras. Okay? So that, that, that changes because he's talking to Epaphras and you are not Epaphras. Or when he says to the church in Galatia, we are in Uyo. Or to the church in Ephesus, we are in Uyo. But the content 
is consistent. The content is consistent. That is why in Colossians 4.16, Brother Paul will say to the church at Colossae, Colossians chapter 4 verse 16, put it up for me. And when this epistle is read among you, cause that it be read also in the church of the Laodosians, because it's the same message, it's the same content. And that you likewise read the epistle from Laodosia. That is whatever I wrote to Laodosia, Colossians read. Whatever I wrote to the church in Colossia, Laodosia read. It's the same. So whatever I wrote to Colossia and Laodosia, Uyo Power City read. The letters were, were transferred from one assembly to another because of the consistency of theology. Theology must be consistent. That is when the truth is upheld. Once it starts changing, it's a lie. Somebody is lying. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Consistency of theology. Can somebody shout a powerful amen? So we began to look at some of those things that can be twisted if you are not careful when it comes to the Pauline theology. And we've dealt with quite a number. We're going to continue from where we stopped in the second service yesterday when we began to look at the concept, the concept of heaven. Are you still in the building? Hebrews chapter 9 verse 23. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 9 verse 23. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with this. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Now we took time yesterday to first of all explain that Jesus' heaven is Paul's church. Or what Jesus called heaven, Paul gave it a broader verbiage by calling it the kingdom or calling it the church. The word your Oranios. Oranios. O-U-R-A-N-I-O-S. Oranios. But to understand the use of this term, is that which explains what is there. To understand the use, you, it is that which explains that which is there. Euphoranius. Euphoranius. There is Oranius and there's Euphor. E-P-O-R-U-A-N-I-O-S. Euphoranius. Where you have the word heavenly. So Paul uses this more and it is not far-fetched because Paul is writing to the church. So he will use this euphoranius or the realm of heaven or the things of heaven. The realm of heaven or the things of the heaven. That's how Paul uses the term heaven. He uses heaven as a realm or he uses heaven to describe things. Things that are immaterial. Things that are immaterial. Don't forget again, Jesus, Jesus' use of heaven and Paul's use of heaven is to show a control room of a sort. What happens in a place or what rules and controls a place. Look at John chapter 3 verse 12. John chapter 3 verse number 12. <clears throat> If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Why do they not believe when he told them earthly things? Because he uses figures of speech. So they are confused. He is using figures of speech. So the death of Jesus is heavenly. Eternal life is heavenly. The gift of no condemnation of the believer is heavenly. Then there are heavenly things or things of heaven. Don't forget, heaven remains the control room of the things that happen on the earth. So now let's examine Paul's language or Paul's verbiage on heaven. Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 3. Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who hath 
blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly in Christ. The places is not in the original. In heavenly in Christ. This heavenly. What are the heavenlies? Verse 4 describes heavenly. Verse 4. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That is heavenly. So being chosen of God, being chosen of God is heavenly. Is heavenly. He calls that, that fact, heavenly, that fact rules what we do on earth. That fact that we are chosen rules what we do on earth. Then verse 5, he has adopted us by Jesus Christ. He has adopted us. So we being adopted by Jesus is heavenly. Verse 6, verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has accepted us or made us accepted in the beloved. That is heavenly. He calls those things the heavenly things. He didn't say when you die, you will see them. The heavenly things are yours now. You are chosen, which is heavenly. You are accepted, which is heavenly. You are adopted, which is heavenly. Are we teaching? It's not an afterlife experience. It is an experience of heaven right now. They are the things we have today and he calls them euphoreneous. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 to 23. Pay attention. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand where? In the heavenlies. Next verse. Far above all principality and power. The con heaven is the control room on the earth. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Next verse. And had put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. Next verse. Which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all which he wrought in the heavenly. Whatever was wrought in Christ was wrought in Christ in the heavenly. And you, and you. So he calls the heavenly things Christ dwelling in you. So Christ in you is heavenly. So that means you know the heavenly of Jesus by the things of that heaven. You didn't hear that. You know the heavenly of Jesus by the things of that heaven. Not by the things of that movie. Not by the things that you were told in that religious church. If it is Jesus' heaven, it will be known by the things of that heaven. Because righteousness is the thing of that heaven. The indwelling of the spirit is the thing of that heaven. Forgiveness of sin is the thing of that heaven. So heavenly therefore refers to God's domain in the earth. It's not a planet. It's God's domain in the earth. Then look at that Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5. Ephesians 2 5 now even when we were dead in sins had quickened us together with Christ by grace you are saved next verse oh hallelujah and has raised us up together and made us sit together where in heavenlies where is heavenlies in Christ Jesus so where are you now you are in Christ which is what 
heavenly. So right now you are in heaven. So heaven is not a goal. Heaven is not at last. Heaven is at first. The moment you came into Christ, or the moment Christ came into you, you made heaven. We are talking of Jesus' heaven, not Hollywood heaven, not religious heaven. Jesus' heaven is where you arrive when you got born again. Right now, you are in heaven. Right now. Are you righteous? What is righteous? Heavenly. What is accepted in the beloved? Heavenly. What is adopted in Christ? Heavenly. You cannot partake of the heavenly except you are in the heavens. You can only partake of the things of that place when you are there. So because you are in Christ, in heaven, you now partake of heavenly realities. Righteousness, peace, joy, accepted in the beloved. All of that is heavenly. Because you yourself are in heaven. And you're not just in heaven. Has made us sit together. We have arrived at a place of rest. I'm teaching good. Now. <clears throat> in verse 6, Brother Paul now talks about our identification. Together, 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 together. Sikatizo has quickened us together, raised us up together, made us sit together. Identification. Together, together, together. The more we are together, together. All right, together. Now, that what together happens in the euphoranius in the things of heaven in Christ. This is Paul's language. It's not like you and Jesus are sitting on a big chair. It is the way Paul talks. Seated together doesn't mean a fat chair. Seated together means you are in an inseparable union. Remember, he uses the word commonwealth. Paul uses the word citizenship. He uses the word nation, which always has rights and privileges. And he says they are yours too in Christ, which is heavenly. Your citizenship is in heaven. You are part of the commonwealth of Zion. You are a member of the commonwealth of Zion. You are a citizen of that country called heaven. Not a planet, but a realm that is immaterial. And you are there right now. Glory to God. You are not going. I think we used to sing one song. We are going to a mansion. Any of you know it? <laughs> we are going to a mansion on a happy day express. The latest on the engine are J E S U S. I'm trying to remember. It's an old, old, old song. We sang that song in the 70s, late 70s into the early 80s. Eh? You were not there. <laughs> the letters on the engine are J E S U S. When they say the angels, the angels come from heaven. Da -ra 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 -ra. We're going to a mansion on the Happy Day Express. Yeah. Express. We're going on Express. 
Don't miss the first flight. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. We sang all kinds of things. Thank God for light. Glory to God. Now, so that is Brother Paul's language. He is expecting you to look away from your endless citizenship and then know that you have another citizenship somewhere. Another behavior somewhere and is found in Christ where you are in him. So again, look at Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. He uses the word heavenly which is what explains his heaven. Which is what explains the Pauline heaven, which is an ex advanced explanation of Jesus' heaven. Are you with me? Huh? Very important. Now, you will know where is heaven by looking at the things of that heaven. You will know where is heaven by looking at the things of that heaven. Ephesians 3.10 Powers in heavenly. Powers in heavenly. So that is why heaven is God's control room in the earth. Look at 1 Corinthians 15.40 Somebody getting blessed? 1 Corinthians 15 verse 40 there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Celestial, terrestrial. Terrestrial bodies, earthly bodies, celestial bodies, heavenly bodies. How do we know heaven? By the things of that heaven. What are the things of that heaven? Righteousness, accepted, uh, adopted, power, chosen, celestial bodies. Are you following? Yeah. Now, 1 Corinthians 15.48 1 Corinthians 15, 48. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. 1 Corinthians 15, 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Talking about the physical body of the believer upon the resurrection of the saint. Where mortality will wear immortality. So in 2 Corinthians 4.18, look at it. 2 Corinthians 4.18. <clears throat> While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Eternal. When he said the things which are seen are temporal, he's talking about the, 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 the body. The things which are not seen are eternal. Hebrews 3.1 Hebrews 3.1 we are for holy brethren partakers of the heavenly calling. Heavenly calling. That is the things we have said are of salvation and what we have in Christ are heavenly realities. Salvation and what we have in Christ are heavenly realities. You know heaven by the things of that heaven. Hebrews 6, 4. He talks about the heavenly gift or the gift of heaven. Hebrews 8, 5. Hebrews 
chapter 8 verse 5. Now watch this. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle for see saith he that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Now this is key. Shadow of heavenly reality. So he calls the blood of Jesus heavenly reality. That's why you don't sprinkle the blood on your food and you don't sprinkle the blood on the road. As we are traveling now, we sprinkle the blood of Jesus. It's a public display of illiteracy. The blood is not liquid. The blood is not matter. If the blood is matter such that you can sprinkle, imagine all Christians in the world when they sprinkle it one time, how much will remain in his body? It's a question. Okay. They sprinkle some drink. How many pints of blood or containers of blood does Jesus have? Stop thinking carnality. Think spiritual. The blood is not matter. The blood is his life. He is the blood. So the blood is heavenly. The blood of Jesus is heavenly reality. He calls the spirit within us heavenly reality. The Holy Ghost in you is heavenly. It's not a planet. It's not talking about a planet, but about what God is doing in the earth. What God is doing in the earth through Jesus, his son, is heavenly in nature. When a man gets born again, he just entered heaven. Heaven just happened to him. Are we in the building? If you're here, can I have a powerful amen? So the fruit of the spirit is heavenly in nature. The fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness. All of that is heavenly. Our righteousness is heavenly in nature. In Hebrews 9.23, he's repeating the same thing I'm saying. Hebrews 11.16, he called it a heavenly city. 11.16 Hebrews. Heavenly city. Hebrews 12, 22, he calls it heavenly Jerusalem. So Paul says, it's of heaven. And when you say that, it's in contrast to earthly things. When you say heavenly things, you're contrasting earthly things. Whatever is of God is heavenly. Praise God. Whatever is of God is heavenly. Where God dwells, what God does, what God gives is euphoronious. Where God dwells, what God does, what God gives is not a planet. That's why you will never hear anyone teach that when a believer dies, he goes to heaven. It's not Bible teaching. It's not doctrine. Believers don't die and go. They don't die and go. Uh -uh. That's why all the people that claim that Elijah went to heaven, Jesus exposed their, their lies. No man has ascended up to heaven. No man. So Elijah never went to heaven. Elijah died. Nobody, no Bible teaching will tell you that when a man dies, he goes to heaven. It's not scriptural. Heaven came into your heart when you got born again. So you are in heaven. When you sleep, you drop mortality. And remain in heaven where you are. On the resurrection day, you wear your heavenly clothes. And we all assemble together. Am I communicating? 
There's a gathering. Now, stay with me, I'm almost done. So whatever is of God is heavenly. He will definitely one day put on a heavenly garment. You didn't hear that. The man who died in Christ will put on what? Heavenly what? It's a cloth. It's a cloth. He will wear his cloth. So look at Jesus' words again. So when Jesus was giving parables of the kingdom of heaven, he definitely was talking about the citizenship and the behavior. That will be love, sacrifice, forgiveness. That's the behavior of heaven. Love, sacrifice, forgiveness, generosity, self-control, spiritual growth. These are all heavenly activities. Even in the popular Lord's Prayer, which the Lord never prayed, You know, the Lord never prayed it. Is there any record of where he prayed it? Eh? He told them, when you pray, pray after this manner. And after he finished giving them the manner, we never found the Lord anywhere praying it. Eh? <laughs> when you pray, pray after this manner. And it is the Lord's prayer. And the Lord who is owning the prayer didn't pray it. And you that don't own the prayer have been praying it from when you were born. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Children pray it all the time. Meanwhile, they are not the Lord. <laughs> Our Father which art in heaven, in case you thought what he meant was, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom is here. Your kingdom come means your kingdom is here. I am your kingdom. Jesus was stylishly using that prayer to reveal to them that I am the Father in heaven and I am the kingdom that has come. Your kingdom is here. Then it's not expecting you to look at heaven in a planet. In verse 14, same prayer he says, your heavenly Father that is, you have an earthly father, but I'm talking about a father that is not earthly. So to distinguish the father I'm talking about from your earthly father, let, let me give him a definition so that you always know that when I am talking about him, I'm not talking about your earthly father. So let us call him Heavenly Father to distinguish him from your earthly father. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. So when you say Heavenly Father, we know you're not talking about your father in the village. But if you say father, anybody could be father. So Jesus added Heavenly for distinguishing purpose. That's what he was saying. Your father, which is not earthly. When he says our father, which is in heaven, he simply meant your father, the one who births you, not according to man's agency, but by his spirit. It's not your father who is far from you. Your father who is in another planet. Your father that one day you will fly to go and meet. So always know why the word heavenly was used. It's not used for a planet. It is used for a system of living or a sphere of authority. And that's how he uses the word heavenly, euphoranious. In Matthew 6, 26, he says, you are a heavenly father. In Matthew 6, 32, he says, your heavenly father knows 
that you have need of all these things. Everybody here has an earthly father, right? Hello? Do we all have earthly fathers? Even if you don't know who your father was, there must have been a father for you to be here. Is it not true? So, he is talking about the father in the kingdom. The father by the new birth. The father by the spirit. Then in Matthew 18, 35, look at this. Matthew chapter 18, verse 35. So likewise, shall my heavenly father do also unto you. If ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother, their trespasses. His brother... You know, years ago, I was preaching for a friend of mine in Lagos. The video went viral, and a lot of people got confused, but a lot of people came to light by that video. When I said, God does not live in heaven. Oh, my goodness. The legion was vomiting. God does not live in heaven. And there are even people till now, they can't understand that statement. God doesn't live in heaven heaven because in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth God what so for God to have created means there's a day when the heaven and the earth started God has no beginning does God have beginning so if God has no beginning he must have been somewhere and it was from there he created heaven and earth. Eh? If he is God, he shouldn't have a location. If he is God, he shouldn't have a location. But when God decided to become a man, man needs heaven and earth. So heaven and earth was created for man. And like I said yesterday, they were together. It is sin that demarcated and the death of Christ brought them back together. So today Christ lives. Christ lives in heaven. Heaven. You didn't hear that. Christ lives in heaven, heaven. And you live in Christ, heaven. So Christ lives in me, I live in Christ. A relationship that can never be separate. So heaven is in my heart, and I am in heaven, Christ. Glory to God. I'm not going anywhere. Are you going anywhere? I like where I am. <laughs> oh, I like where I am. Do you like where you are? So your father by virtue of the kingdom of God, your heavenly father who is not far away from you. In, in Matthew 5, 48, he says, so you shall be the children of your father. Your father not according to the flesh. That's why he calls it Euphorinius. That is your father in the spirit. Your father out of the world. Do you realize that Paul calls his ministry heavenly calling? I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Heavenly. So ministry is heavenly. Ministry is heavenly. And you can only operate heavenly things in heaven. So that term, Euphorinius, explains Jesus is heaven because all the Euphorinius are here on earth. And all the heavenly stuff happens in the earth. So if all the Euphorinius happens on the earth or are from the earth, including what we have including what we have received, which is salvation, including our rights and privileges, it shows you, therefore, that heaven is actually in you. So see, like a control room, a reign of it will actually be us. When heaven reigns, is we walking in the spirit. 
When I walk in the spirit, it is the reign, the rule of heaven. When I walk in the world, when I do the world, when I live by the world, I'm living a heavenly life. Are you understanding? Yeah. When I live by the world. Okay. When, when I relate with people by the world, it is heavenly relationship. Once the world is involved, it's heavenly. Walking in heaven right now on earth. Because heaven and earth we are set together in Genesis. So Abraham was right when he said, I lift up my hands to the possessor of heaven and earth. Which was talking about referring to man. When you're talking about heaven and earth, you're talking about man. What we have today, the things that belong to us today in Christ are heavenly. So Jesus used that term heaven strong enough for you to see it. And in his closing days, he turned to them and said, He that has seen me has seen the Father. Then they said, show us the Father. He said, the Father is in me. That heavenly Father is in me. I have been talking about he has always been in me. Then Jesus says, the works that I do is not I that do them, but the Father in me do the works. So the Father in Christ is heaven in Christ. He doeth the works. John 10, 38. I'm rounding up. Are you blessed? John 10, 38. Look at this. But if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works. That ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. The Father is in... There's no Father outside Jesus. The Father is in Jesus. Jesus is in the Father. Look at John 14.10. There's no way Jesus ever said I am God. You never read Bible. When you read you will see Believest thou not that I'm in the Father and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth. What's dwell? Huh? What is visit? Huh? Go and come. What is dwell? To take up residence. The father has always dwelt in Jesus. The father is dwelling in Jesus. And the father will always dwell in Jesus. Yeah. The father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Since when Jesus came, heaven has been here. The arrival of Jesus to earth was the arrival of heaven. So the coming of Jesus brought heaven and earth back together. Which has been the plan. It was sin that divided them. But the coming of God in human flesh amalgamated heaven and earth together. So right now you're in heaven. When a man is born again, he goes into heaven. When a man is born again, he goes into heaven and he remains there eternally. When he dies, that which is not heavenly in him, which is his body, stays on earth. But on the day of the Lord, his body will bear the image of the heavenly. That's what happens. So, as we are here, we need to understand Paul's usage of heaven. And his usage of heaven is the same usage Jesus used. Paul and Jesus bought both of them taught heaven as the control tower. The kingdom in operation. The kingdom in operation. You know, as we close, we're going to be looking at the king of this kingdom as a servant. The king of this kingdom. You will know that the kingdom of God is totally different from the Nigerian government, from the American government, and from the Israeli government. It is the government of a servant king, a lamb which became Lord by virtue of his sacrifice. Who became our Lord, not because of what we gave him, but because of what he gave us. Did you get that? 
He became our Lord, not because of what we gave him, but because of what he gave to us. And so, in this kingdom, we reign in the earth. They that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, what happens to them? They reign where? In this life. In this life. Through Jesus Christ. They reign over sickness. They reign over demons. They reign over the works of the devil. They reign in this life. And they go all over the world. Look at this. They go all over the world mass producing heaven on earth. You didn't hear that. They go all over the world mass producing heaven on earth. So whenever you go on evangelism, what are you going to do? You're going to mass produce heaven on earth in the hearts of men. Say with me, I preach the gospel. I reproduce the kingdom of heaven on the earth. Can you imagine a city where nobody is born again? Heaven is absent. The first man to be born again in that city becomes a lighthouse in that city. He becomes a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. And I have news for you. You are the light of the world. Get on your feet tonight. Glory to God forever. Are you blessed tonight? Jacob Barakatoma. Lift your hands and let's just praise him and bless him for these realities. Let's bless him and praise him for this light. Let's bless him and praise him for this revelation knowledge that comes to us every day. Just go ahead, get excited tonight. Mendo Lodo Bobra da Baro Kotome Kele Nemazo Kele Nemata. Lebra da Dolo de Bobo Boje Kele Nema. Legro do Zobre de Kila Namaba Bereke to Le Baraka. Ange Bozo Kolo de Bobo. With an understanding of that reality, go ahead. Begin to give them praise. Begin to give them worship. Begin to give them honor. Begin to give them adoration. In the name of Jesus. Look at me, everybody. I wanted to open your mouth and begin to thank God for making you qualified to reproduce his kingdom in the hearts of men. For the honor he has given you to bring his kingdom alive in the hearts of men. I'd like you to begin to give him praise. The privilege of preaching the gospel. The privilege of advancing the kingdom. The privilege of replicating the kingdom in the hearts of men. The privilege of manifesting the glory of Jesus. Go ahead, go ahead. Kalana, membra da coco golodo bojeke, agaba zokele de babra, rakoto bela nama, hange bojekela, hange bojekela, hange bojekela, hange bojekela, hange bojekela, hange bojekela. Miga da za brava da da ge da brava de la baba de za brava da 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 Ega la baba da da Ega da za brava de kata kala baba da brava da 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 Ega la baba da za da da ge da za brava da ga da da Ela bra bobo Eva da za brava de kata kala bobo de brava ba Me va da ze brave de kete kele bobo de brava da Ega da 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 de da kala baba da da za brava da Ela bra bobo Eva da brava da ga da ze brava de kata kala baba shi brava Me ve de ge me ve de ze brave de 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 Iga da ze brave Ve de ge de bobo de brava da 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 da, ela bobo, ega da da da, le ga da za brava de da da, de ka da la bava da se brava de ka da, e be ve ne ge de bobo de brava da, ela bobo, ega la 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 bobo, me se de ge de se pre ve de de ge te ke le bobo de brava da da, e de se pre ve de ga la bobo sha brava da za brava da, ela bobo de se brava da, me ve de se pre ve ge te, ela bobo do se brava da se brava da ga ta ka la bobo, e da 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 da, e ga Da da da, e gaza brava da ga la pa vende se preve de de de, e la pa bo 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 de pa 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 da brava, e la brava me vende de, me vende de, me vende de, e ga de 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 se preve de de, i gua da la pa pa da brava da da da, e ga da za brava da ga da da, e ga la pa pa da brava da ga da, me vende de de se preve de de, e ga de se preve de, me vende de le bo bo, ba da 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 de 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 le bo bo de, a ga da za brava da 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 brava, me vende de, e ga le bo bo bi va da, me vende se preve de de, le pre de de Get the kind of bubble she brought back. Ega la bobo, 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 
Nobody brother does a brother, they got a lababada, and fed as a brivada, Minguana Sabra, and Galababodi Bra, and as a brave, and Galabode, Mavada, and Galababo, and Galababo, and Galababo, Mavada, Mavati Guana Sabra, take a Takalababata brother, pushing some more, pushing some more, Mavada, Iguana Sabra, and Galabafed as a brother, and Nagada, maybe there's a brother, and Kataki, the Boboshi brother, and Nagada Baba, and Ababo. Ela bravo, ela garada, é gala baba, é vada gara, é gala ba, é garada, é garada, é garada, ma vada da, ma vada da, e guarda sempre, ma vada sa bravada, é gala se prefete, me vede gala bobo si brava, a gala sa bravada, é gala baba, ma vada sa bravada, gata sa bravada da da da, puxa sa mo, a gata sa bravede que, e gala da, me vede se preveni gata gala baba da, é Legada se prefete, ma vada sa brava, é gala baba si brava. Bevede gade bo, bevede gade bo si brava da. Bevede se de de de, le be se be kwata ka. Agada sa brava da ka, bevede gade bo si brava. Agada sa brava da ka, é gala baba si brava. Me se gala baba si brava, bevede gade. Agada sa brava de ka, sa gala baba si brava da. Me se de gala baba si brava, ala gada sa brava da da. Bevede, é gala de, é gala se, é gala da, é la gabo, é la gabo. Ela gaba, ela gaba, ela gaba. Mas assim pra fazer que te quer levar você pra fazer. É quando você pra fazer, é quando você pra fazer. Não para fazer que te quer levar você pra fazer. Me fez que ele levou você pra fazer. É, é. Puxa isso mais. Ah, 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 ah
We preach the gospel with power in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> ah, we are enabled with might in the inner man. And that is Zabra. We go to Baba Sipra. And we get the Bobo Shipra. And we get the Bobo Shipra. And we get the Bobo Look for another person and generate power. Look for another person and generate power. We preach the gospel and generate power. We generate power in the Holy Ghost. The power of God is inside in us. We are heaven on earth. We are carriers of the power of God in us. Generate power, generate power. We preach the gospel with power in the Holy Ghost. Pushing some more, pushing some more, pushing some more. We are generating power in the Holy Ghost. We declare that the blind see, the lame walk, the dumb speak, deafness stop in the name of Jesus. The blind see, the blind see, the lame walk. Barakadema shatada la baha, the gandos agayatanda la baha. The dumps enter, sickness is stopped, deafness is stopped. Barakatayara la baha, 
shadows of Kalabaya, Era Kandayata, by the preaching of the God, the Kadayatara, the Hanata, the Rango Sakayaba, the Shadayatara, the Kandayatara, the Ero Sakayaba, the Ero Sakayaba, the Kandaba Shandayata, the Renda Shandaba, the Kadosh and the Lebra, the Kandosh and the Lebra, the Kadayatara, the Kandayata, call them for call them high. We take them, 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 we take them. Kadosha Tarabaha, Tarabashi Hadata, Golden Nation. We take them as our inheritance in Christ. We take them as our inheritance in Christ. To the preaching of the gospel. Netherlands is taking her. Spain is taking her. Italy is taking her. Barakadosha Telebaha, Kabodosha Telebaha. We take them, Marakadosha Talabaha, Shekada Rabashi Handayata. The Brazil is taking her. Canada is taking her. Bareka dos Egele Bashi Handayatarabaha. Rokande Bashi Handayatarabaha. Ara Kadosha Telebraha. Rande Bashi Handayatarabaha. Ara Kadosha Telebraha. Lada Bashi Handayabaha. UAE is taking her. Cyprus is taking her. Baro Kadesha Telebaha. We take this nation. Inheritance <laughs> We take them, we take this nation, we take them as an inheritance in Christ, we take them as an inheritance in Christ. We take nations, 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 we take we take them, 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 we we declare that the resources are made available by us for the advice I make my resources available for the advice of the gospel. Our resources, resources are made available by help for the advance of the gospel. I make my resources available. I declare my resources are for the gospel. 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 
for men, dedicated men, committed men, loyal men, in all our campuses, in all our campuses, campuses in Asia, campuses in South America, campuses in North America, yes, in South Africa, campuses in East Africa, campuses in North Africa, campuses in West Africa. Lawyer man, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, I want you to begin to lay hands on yourself. 
Speak to your health. Speak to your body. Speak to your organs. Command every member of your body to be quickened, to be healthy, to be strong. Speak to every part of your body. Declare your body is a vehicle. Your body is a tool for the advancement of God's kingdom. Your body is an instrument of God to speak the purpose of God to your generation. Therefore, every organ of your body, every member of your body, every bone, every tissue, every ligament, every tendon, your heart, your liver, your blood system, you declare it right now by the power of God's word, healed and quickened and strengthened and refreshed. Go ahead, speak to your body. Begin to declare whatever is not planted by God in your body. Root it out. Root it out. Every condition, every condition, every infirmity, every deficiency, flush them out. within me bless his holy name bless the lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits bless the lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits he let my diseases he healed my diseases he renews my youth like an eagle Speak to your body. La grada jokolona. Angebo saka. Angebo saka. Angebo saka. Angebo saka. You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and spirit. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Sickness cannot stay there. Disease cannot stay there. Speak health. Speak strength. Seek health. Speak strength. Angama sodia. In the name of Jesus. Can I hear that amen? Say with me, my body is bought with a price. This body is Jesus' property. Satan, you have no access to this body. It has been paid for, purchased by the blood of Jesus, by the life of God. Jesus lives here. Jesus lives here. Therefore, sickness and disease, you have no access into my body. My body is well. My body is strong. My body is healthy. My organs are healthy. My bones are strong. My joints are healthy. My tendons are healthy. 
my tissues are healthy my ligament is healthy my heart is healthy my liver is healthy my kidneys are healthy my blood is healthy i am strong and well no disease no infirmity no shortage survives my body by his stripes i am healed i am well i am strong i am healthy every part of my body is delivered from oppression oppression cannot stay in my body how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about healing those that were oppressed every oppression on my body is broken oppression is broken oppression is broken where i need a miracle for any organ of my body where i need a miracle for my blood where i need a miracle for my brain for my cells where i need a miracle for my tissues my tendons my veins my artery where i need a miracle for my system respiratory system digestive system where i need a miracle for my nervous system by the word of god i receive a miracle right now i receive a miracle creative miracle creative miracle i receive i receive i receive healing is my bread i receive right now and i declare i declare i declare i declare my organs I refresh, revitalize, renewed, regenerated, rejuvenated by the life of God, the life of God, the life of God, the life of God, the life of God is at work in my body right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak to women in our ministry who are in need of fruit of the womb whether in this church or in our campuses that are watching online right now whatever constitutes reproduction in your body and in your organs it is refreshed now receive that miracle receive that miracle receive that miracle i speak to your husband wherever he is his body is quickened his organs are revitalized in the name of jesus we declare reproduction reproduction it is written be fruitful and multiply be fruitful and multiply be fruitful and multiply every organ malfunctioning in your body or your husband's body i command it corrected 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 receive power to conceive in the name of jesus we speak miracles we speak miracles we speak miracles we speak miracles we are you need financial miracles job miracles occupational miracles professional miracles receive in the name of jesus new relationships ideas concepts business creativity business ideas business opportunities receive in the name of jesus make money make much money make much much more money in the name of jesus you will run and not be weary you will walk and not faint you will run and not be weary you will walk and not faint your sight is refreshed your sight is refreshed your hearing is corrected in the name of jesus your sight is refreshed your hearing is corrected in the name of Jesus. Your body is made whole, made whole, made whole, made whole. Inflammations in your body flushed out, infections in your body die off flushed out every infection in your blood in your blood vessels in your bloodstream every form of infection flushed out flush flush ayanash out in the name of jesus zebato belita batata the power 
power that created the universe is inside you. Where you need a creative miracle in your body and in your system. Where you need a creative miracle in your body and in your system. Where you need a creative miracle. Ziakuta Balak. Ziakuta Balak. By the name of Jesus, that office that defeated death, that office that defeated Satan, that office that defeated sin, that office that defeated hell, I command your body be made whole. All these useless symptoms flushed out. Ziatoba. 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 For this purpose, the Son of God is manifested. That he may destroy the works of the devil. Every unfruitful work of darkness is destroyed right now. It is done. It is done. Lift your hands and begin to give praise. 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 Ziakoto Balataya. Praise you, Father. And Jesus healed them all. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a shout in this place? Give him a praise. Glory. Glory, 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 glory. Sakwatobaha. Amen. Blessed, blessed, blessed. Amen. Praise God. We're closing to let you go. Remember, 9 o'clock, we're live with the teaching of the word. 10 o'clock, we're live with prayer. Tomorrow morning, 5 to 6. And remember to take extra moments to pay some attention to the things the Lord is speaking to you in this period. Victory is yours. Permanent victory is yours. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Get out your offerings. We give in faith. Those of you online, the banking details are scrolling. We give in faith. We give with joy. We give in appreciation and in gratitude for what God has already done for us. Father, thank you for everybody giving tonight. Our offerings are a sweet smell before you. Thank you for the blessing upon those giving online in the campuses and all over the world. Father, we give because we have been blessed by you in every ramification. You've given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And we rejoice in Christ Jesus. So thank you that our offering is a sweet smell before you today. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. All right. Have a great evening and be blessed everybody. You can drop your offerings and good night. I mean, good night. We'll see you tomorrow. It's quarter to six as we continue the teaching of God's word. Amen. We trust that you have been blessed by this message. To order the complete series of this message and all the messages by Dr. Abel Daminer, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.